What's up guys and welcome back to some more Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today, we are going to be hopping in the cockpit of the most dominant bird in the skies. I'm really excited for this one, man. A lot of you guys have been leaving comments saying you have to check out the F-22 Raptor. This is one of the craziest aircraft of all time. It is literally the best air-to-air -air combat fighter ever made, probably ever will be made, at least for a very long time from now. That includes the F-35. It is better than the F-35 in many ways. And uh, this is, is crazy, dude. This is so sick. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I, I chose to start from parking and I'm not sure how to turn it on. So, um, if, if, oh, okay, safety, uh, usually we just start from the edge of the runway and it's already on and I, I have no idea. Is there a power button? Parking brake, gear. Look at that F-22 Raptor emblem right there. Let me just say first and foremost, look at how open this cockpit is. I mean, it's physically open right now, but just like, look, look at how there's, it's like a good iron sights on a COD weapon where there's just not a lot of, you know, business going on. You can just see everything that you need to see. By the way, we are at Nellis Air Force Base just outside of Las Vegas. So, um, that's a start. Battery on. Resetting the APU generator. Avionics master starter engine starter engine. Are we live? I think we're starting up. Dude, look at this bird. Yeah, we're definitely starting up, but I feel like there's something else that it's going to want me to do that I don't I don't know how to do it. <laughs> look Look at us in there, dude. We we have no idea what's going on, but we're in an F-22, so that's cool. Put some beacon lights, some recognition lights, some tacky taxi lights, some nav, nav lights, strobe lights, logo lights. I'm just going to put all the lights on. We're going to be able to pitch our trim and stuff, rudder trim. Can't really see anything that's going on there. What is this here? Cover? I'm legitimately starting this thing up without having any idea what's going on. Are they online? My, my thrust thing is moving the, the throttle. My throttle's moving the throttle, but I don't see anything happening. Okay. So let's, let's put those back, I guess. Do I need to turn the safety off? Manual separation. We're, de we're definitely online. I think we're online. I think we can go. How do I, how do I shut the, the, cockpit the, the lid this guy looks like a little fish poking out we've got master warning resets we're definitely gonna need those what is this here cabin pressure I dumped it are these like the the unknown Pokemon are these hieroglyphics what's going on here okay I'm gonna take the parking brake off yeah we we can roll sorry about your head there bud okay uh, the problem is we're rolling with the cockpit open and I I feel like it's a bad idea to take off like this. Okay, we gotta figure out <laughs> we're just rolling down the runway here. Uh let me let me shut these off. At least we've got that working for us. I I thought I put I thought I put our brakes on, but it's it's not working very well. Here we go. Let's Let's just coast down the runway. We've got to figure out how to put the, the lid down. There's no button or like flap or anything. I mean, this is not the intro that I wanted, but I hope you guys are enjoying it. I've got a lot of really cool F-22 facts for you guys. We're going to get into that as soon as we figure out how to put this. I'm just, I'm, there's no way this works on Google. The F-22 is one of the most protected, like highly classified, you know, aircraft in, in the world. Uh, how to close cock pit lid f22 i'm actually gonna be smart about it i'm gonna say flight sim f22 startup and i'm gonna watch that there's no way
Okay, that's pretty sick. We've got to start starting our aircraft from parking, not from the edge of the runway, because that's pretty cool. I'm assuming we're going to want to get... Uh, where was our starter? Starter engine on, on. Bang, bang. Flip these two back. Engine should be coming online. Oh, my goodness, dude. Look at those things. This is... You know, I, I talked about how the F-35 was one of the most beautiful aircraft in the world. I think this might take the cake, dude. Look at this thing. Look at that rear end. That's actually... This whole area, the, the BH of the F-22 is, is kind of what makes it so special. So, anyway, I, uh, I think we're good. I'm going to take off our air brake and our parking brake. It's currently off. We're going to start going again. I think it takes a minute for it to start up. Oh, yeah, there she is. Oh, my goodness. She comes to life. All right, we're going to slow this down, and we are going to taxi to some runway. I, I'm not talking to ATC. I'm just going to take what I got because I'm in the best fighter jet of all time. In terms of, like, when you think fighter jets and you think air-to-air -air dog, dog fighting, you know, air-to-air -air combat, that kind of thing, literally nothing beats this. This is the most efficient air superiority fighter in the world. It first flew, the very first flight was in December of 1977, and it went all the way up until about 2011. They're not making any more of these. They actually didn't, uh, the, the U.S. government didn't order as many as they originally said they were going to, and we'll, we'll kind of get into that. It's kind of sad, but um, basically the F-35 kind of took over and, even though the F-35 isn't quite as capable air-to-air -air, and in terms of, you know, um, dogfighting and things like that, it does some other things better. They're each specialized tools. They each have their places and positions and things. Dude, we are flying through the taxiway here. About 17 knots. Gonna make our way to some sort of a spot where we can take off. I'm honestly not, not sure where that spot would be. I'm kind of off the beaten path here, but this looks like a big a big runway over here to our left. Is this are we heading in the right direction? Kinda of got a little bit too much speed to be able to make this turn. There it is. Oh yeah. This is what we were looking for. Alright, here we go. Take it off from Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. Air Force Base because that's the only group that have ever flown this jet. Let's go ahead and go outside for this. Oh, she's screaming. Let me put our gear up. Wow. Can we put our afterburners on? Dude, it's so loud. I, I can hardly even hear myself think this thing is gnarly. We might have to go in front of it just to be able to hear. Holy crap, what's, what's going on underneath? Why are our things open? That's like our armament bay. I don't think we want that open. That's probably why we can't go. It's not our, our landing gear. We must have pressed something inside the cockpit. I'm pretty sure we... How do you close your flaps? There's our landing gear. I'm going to put those back up. Okay. We're off to a wonderful start here. So I'm going to be honest. I, uh, I, I just restarted here. I wasn't sure what we had pressed. I wasn't prepared for the intro to that to try to try to take a, okay Trev let's not let's we're not drifting this thing I wasn't prepared for that intro to like you know try to do it all myself I actually might start doing some research into that and trying to do it myself in the future because that was really really fun but uh, yeah our our doors are closed here we have full you know use of everything we've got our afterburners which are currently lit dude oh my goodness look at those things wow this thing is absolutely insane. Let's go inside so we can hear ourselves think, and we are going to head over towards Las Vegas. So, yes, this is the best fighter jet in the world for what you think of when you think about fighter jets. Dog fighting, air-to-air -air combat, you know, taking out the bad guys, doing the cool Top Gun stuff. This is the ultimate version of that. It's the fastest, it can fly the highest, it can carry the most weapons, it can turn the fastest, it can change direction, it can, you know, stop, go, whatever. It, it, it turns on a dime. There's nothing that even comes close to what the F-22 can do. Now, with all of that capability, obviously comes a big price tag. So, like I said, it came out back in, uh, in the 70s, and uh, this thing cost a whopping 150 million. When you look at where we're at currently, I'm sure it would cost a lot more in today's dollars, even though it hasn't even been that long. So about 150 million just to get it out the door, just to get it on the tarmac, 
whole lifetime cost of one of these was estimated to be about 334 million. Look how fast we are going right now. The whole thing's just shaking. It's called a raptor for a reason, dude. This thing just wants to sink its claws into you and, and take you out. So yeah, high upfront costs, high maintenance costs, you know, keeping up with it, training with it, that sort of thing costs. I think this thing was somewhere around $70,000 per hour to run, which is ridiculous. The F-35, granted, you know, this thing kind of paved the road for it, and a lot of the tech of the F-35 was built on the back of the 22. The F-35 is maybe, you know, 25,000 an hour. I think it started around 30, and it's been going down. So, uh, the F-22 is just very expensive, and that's part of the reason why it met its demise. Just look at this thing, man. I mean, there... There's truly something about it. You know, the, the F-35 looks sick. Don't, don't get me wrong. But the F-22, there is... There's something a little more menacing about it. A little scarier, a little more aggressive. I don't know if it's just the shape of it with the, the perfect symmetry. Obviously, you know, all jets are going to be perfectly symmetrical. But, you know, the, the angled, angrier looking exhaust ports. I, I don't know what it is, but this thing, like if I was the enemy, if I saw this thing coming, which you wouldn't see it coming, by the way, that's part of what makes it so good. I don't think I could do it. I, I, I'd, I'd give up. I'd instantly turn around, turn back, and uh, I'd probably still be alive because of it. Oh my goodness, dude. This thing handles so well. Let's go ahead and pull back a little bit on the speed to test some of the maneuverability. So that's really the one of the defining parts about this plane are those exhaust ports. The, the engine, you know, the, the end of the engines where the thrust and everything comes out. So um, those are, are vector to here and they can actually angle up and down up to 20 degrees. And that's what gives this thing such an incredible ability to turn even more so than, you know, other fighters that have since come out after it. It redirects the thrusts so you can move up and down a lot quicker. And obviously, you know, when we're talking about dogfights, being able to move around, being able to cut back and forth, being able to evade missiles and, you know, get out of the way quickly and pop in and out of combat and that kind of thing. That's what, what really, really made this thing special. Take some low flight over the water here. Oh my goodness, dude, this thing is so sick. Wow, busting the sound barrier, getting down right next to the water. Holy cow, now that's actually another thing that made it special. Let's, uh, can we, I guess if you back off, you cut the afterburners. This thing could cruise at Mach 1.5 without afterburners. Usually, fighter jets need afterburners to get above Mach 1, but this could cruise at Mach 1.5 without them, and I, it could go up to like 1.8 or more with them. So, not only could it turn on a dime and it was just highly maneuverable, it was also super, super fast. Or is super fast. I mean, they're still used today. They're just not being made anymore today, so I should probably stop saying was, because it's still here. She's out flying the skies doing her thing, and she's still terrorizing the enemy, so... Got to give her the respect she deserves. This is so amazing, dude. Oh my god. Inside the cockpit is so much more chill. Wow. Look at this. Let's go up. I want to go up. Up we go. Maybe slow down the speed a little bit so we can get more... More altitude. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I need some more clouds. I want some more cloud cover. We're up above the top layer here. Let me, yeah, give me some clouds, baby. Give me some clouds. There it is. I want to play around in the clouds. Oh, she is just so beautiful, dude. Look at this. Don't worry, I know. I got you. I'm not worried about it. Ugh. Imagine seeing this thing emerge from the clouds. You, you just, you'd know it was over. So yeah, she's super maneuverable, super, super fast, and very, very, very stealthy. I mean, this is kind of the foundation of what the F-35 was built upon. If you guys missed our F-35 video, make sure you guys go check it out. That's kind of the, the main fighter that the U.S. is, you know, developing and using right now. But um, this is where it all began. So look, look at this jet. It's a big jet, right? Like, that's, that's a big plane. On radar signature for enemies, it shows up as about the size of a bumblebee. That's the size of the radar. Okay, you know, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. I saw my master switch over here. 
Master warning reset, whatever. All right, please, please don't crash, Trev. I know we got mountains in front of us. But um, yeah, so uh, something this size, but it's so well masked on radar, it looks about the size of a bumblebee. That is absolutely ridiculous. So that was the other part of it. You know, it, it's you know got incredible armament and missiles and, and long range tech capabilities, but it's also fast enough to be up on you before you even see it because it's so small on radar. It can completely outmaneuver and outgun you at close range, long range, and everything in between. And then it can get out of there before you ever even knew it was there. So that's, I mean, it, it that's why it's the best, you know, air-to-air -air combat weapon that's ever flown the skies. In fact, it was so advanced and it was it was so important to, to the U.S. to keep it a secret and, and to, you know, not let other countries get this sort of technology. It was banned from export. The only group that has ever flown this thing is the U.S. Air Force. It was never sent out to allies or anything like that. Whereas when you look at the F-35, that's been sent to pretty much all of our allies and it's all around the world. So it's kind of interesting because the F-35 is technically a little bit more advanced or at least that's what we know. Maybe the F-22 has secrets that we still don't even know about yet. But yeah, it was, it was the foundation and, and the, the building blocks of what the F-35 is built off of. And it was kept a complete secret, but then the F-35 is given to everyone who asked for one, which is, is kind of an interesting way of doing business, but uh, I guess I'm you know not in the Pentagon making these sorts of decisions, so what do I know? Whoo, that was close. Almost let that one get away from me. Let's, uh, I say we advance the time a little bit. Let's get some more daytime action. That looks good to me, some blue skies. And I'm gonna say again, let's let's hit it. Let's go up just a wee bit higher. Oh, this thing is beautiful. Look at that blue skies, moon in the background. All right, kind of a reverse split S type maneuver we did right there. So this is actually probably the craziest stat that I found about this thing. And if it's, I mean, I'm assuming it's true because I found it in a couple of places. The KD ratio of the F-22 is 108 to zero. Now, I think one of these was shot down one time, maybe by a Russian plane, and it was like a, a less, like significantly less technologically advanced plane. Like it, it was definitely at a, a disadvantage and somehow I got it. I don't know any details on that. I don't know if there are details available, but in terms of like, you know, pilot kill ratios, 108 to zero, this thing has never lost and uh, Hopefully it never does. I'm gonna move us over to Los Angeles here just to give us a little bit of city flying, change up the scenery. We're gonna go back to Vegas to land. Figured it kind of made sense, you know what I mean? We're fairly close enough, this thing has a ton of range. 1,800 nautical miles or something like that. So we could have flown over here and flown back. It wouldn't have taken very long at all. Look at this. Downtown Los Santos, baby. Let's go see what uh, Michael Franklin and, and Trev are up to. Dude, this game is so insane. We really haven't flown around LA much in this series, have we? We're gonna have to change that. Maybe we'll do a sightseeing tour or something. But um, yeah, so all in all, this thing was an absolute beast, obviously. So the question is, why did it stop? They stopped production in, in 2007, I think it was, 2011. So why, why? Why? It doesn't make sense, right? If it's the, the best that there ever was at what it did, what was the reasoning for that? Well, number one, it was really expensive. Obviously, you know, I mean, one of the most expensive jets in the world and, and $70,000 per flight hour is just ridiculous. Uh, I think the government originally had 750 planned to order from Lockheed Martin. They only ended up buying like 186, and I think only 150 of those ended up operational. So they really cut their plans pretty short. And again, the, the main reason was, you know, the money. Another big reason is that air-to-air -air combat just stopped being as important. For a while, we were kind of in a rush or in a, a race with like Russia and, and China and things like that. And we still are to an extent, and it seems, you know, according to things I've been reading. Again, I'm just regurgitating information here. According to what I've been reading, it kind of seems like that might be picking up here again in, in the future and currently. But, um, you know, back when these things were, were new and being made and things, it just, it, it wasn't a focus. It, it wasn't a big deal. When you think about, you know, our, our war against terror and out in the Middle East and things like that, like, those guys don't have super advanced fighter jets, so it just became a less important thing. You know, the F-35 
has a lot of the abilities that the F-22 does. It's not quite as good at air to air, but it's got more in terms of air to ground and information gathering and electronic warfare and things like that. So it just made more sense to focus more on a fighter that could kind of do it all rather than a fighter that was mainly good at fighting. And I mean, the F-22 could still do a lot else and it, it was super stealthy and could, you know, be a spy plane and gather information and things like that, but it's just not as much of a jack of all trades as the F-35 is. So that's, I think, kind of the main reason why they changed it. It just wasn't needed at the time, and I doubt they'll ever end up bringing it back. Even if it does become more of a need, we'll probably develop something new before we bring this back. I was reading we're bringing back a lot of F-15s and things, which we still have to check out in this series, so I guess we'll have to talk about that in a, a future date. Look at this Santa Monica Pier, baby. Beautiful. With the, uh, the roller coaster and everything. That's sick. Oh, my goodness. All right, we're going to do a loop around. Let's head south, go by Venice and everything, and uh, then we can start heading back towards Vegas. But, yeah, I guess that's one of my things that I was most interested in is, is kind of what separated the F-22 and the F-35 because they're both, you know, obviously very, very exciting, very capable aircraft. I'm actually going to aim us back towards towards downtown and let's let's hit the jets here. So the F-22 air superiority, air to air combat, running the skies, absolutely destroying anyone it doesn't even come close. That's where the F-22 lies. Better at air to air combat, it can fly faster, it can fly to higher altitudes, it can turn faster, it can do pretty much everything faster in terms of movement, and it can even carry a higher weapon payload, which I didn't, I, I suspected the F-35 might be better at that because that's, that's kind of a specialty of it, but no, the, the F-22 could carry more ammunition. Again, this thing's a raptor, dude. Like th this thing is meant to be fast, sneaky, and kill you. It'll fly by over the city here upside down oh my goodness dude this is so sick wow look at that all right heading back northeast towards vegas f-35 is a multi-role fighter it it can do air-to-air -air combat very efficiently you know second best fighter ever made for that but it's better at everything else on top of that so air to ground communication information that kind of thing this is just so peaceful. Look at this thing, dude. Let me do like a little... What are these called? Where they like peel off? Our camera's following it though, so it's not really peeling off. Oh my goodness, dude. Just look at this thing. Wow. There's something of just the way the cockpit is angled and focused in there. Ugh. There is something about this jet that just inspires me. Wow, just want to give it a belly rub. Look at that good, good belly right there. I thought it'd be fun to come back to Vegas with a uh, a night landing. So uh, here we go. I mean, we, we could buzz buzz the strip maybe one time. I did find a really interesting Vegas DLC that I want to uh, I want to pick up because it adds a lot of of realism and stuff to it, and maybe we can do kind of a little tour style of thing but uh let's let's do a, a little flyby of the strip and then we're gonna put this bird down dude look look at the reflections of the avionics in the cockpit hatch that's cool so we're gonna go by some of the hotels here right down the uh, the strip i can't wait for f1 vegas next year dude i really hope i get the chance to go it's probably gonna be outrageously expensive but um i'd love to uh love to try there's nellis that's where we took off from we're not gonna land there i want to land at uh at mccarran the main big airport it's right there behind us let's test the uh the turning capability here you kind of got to lose a little bit of speed to be able to make these turns but you also want the thrust gonna bring this thing on around Woo! not too shabby Full afterburner approaching the strip again, but this time we are not going to be going by. Let's go ahead and set our air brake. We might be coming in a bit too hot. Oh, no, we're going to be fine. Flaps up. Looks like we're low enough on speed. Dude, that air brake is insane. All right, we're going to put our landing gear down, see if I can get you guys a view of that. Uh, you can't really see much, to be honest. And... Uh, here we go, coming into McCarran. 
Gonna be honest, I don't know what the landing speed is. It's probably slower than we're going right now, but we're gonna be okay. I wanna apply a little bit more air brake. I'm not trying to wreck this thing right at the very end. Nice and slow. Dude, this thing is so smooth. And she can just, she, whatever you want her to do, she does it. it. It's almost like being in a dream. Like you just have instant snappy control of everything you want. Don't come in too hot. Here we go. Nice long runway. And... It's a nice easy touchdown right there. Let's go. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed that, my friends, is the F-22 Raptor. What a, uh, a good time. How do you turn your headlights on? I'm not sure. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Lots of interesting information we were able to share here. I always have fun looking up all the info. And honestly, we kind of hijacked this thing at the very start. Um, just hopped in and figured out what the buttons did and, and made it work. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to see you guys in our next one. Drop a like. Catch you all later. I say we bust out of here one more time. And there she goes. I'll see you later. Peace out.